Hello chess lovers, Soren here and in this video I would like to share with you another fascinating game played by the 8th world chess champion Mikhail Tal. His opponent is Yuryo Rantanen and this game was played in 1979 at Keras Memorial. But before starting the game, would like to warm up your brain and please take a look at this position and try to find a winning move for white. I will wait for your answer in the comment section. And now, without further ado, let's go for our main game and see what happened on the board. Tal opened up with e4 and Rantanen responded with Sicilian defense. c5, knight f3, knight c6 and we have bishop b5, white goes for Nishmetino for a Solimo attack. e6, another popular alternatives are g6 or d6, in our game we have e6, white castles, king side, quite often white also captures on c6 as well, but in our game we have castling, king side, Knight e7, black wants to play c6, after which is intending to recapture on c6 with the knight. We have knight c3, a6, bishop takes c6, knight takes c6, d4, c takes d4, knight takes d4, d6, rook e1, bishop d7. Taking into consideration the fact that black was intending to recapture on c6 with b pawn, in here it was better either to play queen c7 or bishop e7, but in our game we have bishop d7 and after knight takes c6, b takes c6, queen g4, but like he's starting to face some problems with the development of his kingside bishop. e5 by Rantanen, queen g3 and a very dubious decision f6. There was nothing wrong with queen f6 and of course this bishop g5 move can't harm black, black can simply play queen g6. But in our game after queen g3 we have f6, yes black is intending to castle by hand by playing king f7, bishop e7 and then rook e8, bishop e3. But of course as I've already mentioned this is a strange decision and black is losing too many tempos, king f7, rook d1. Bishop e7, knight a4, the knight can both jump on b6 or even at some point this c4, c5 advancement is playable with rook b8, b3, rook e8, c4. And once Black is creating a hole on d5 by playing c5, the knight is hurrying on d5, bishop f8 and this time we have f4. Tal is organizing his attack, meanwhile still black is consolidating his position. King g8, we have rook f1, queen c8, f takes e5, f takes e5 and there it goes, a perfect outpost for the knight. Right now the threat is knight f6 check, that's why Rantanen moved away his king from the dangerous g5, but as the rook is no longer controlling the f7 square, the rook penetrates, yes, rook f7 is on the board, bishop g4, and now you can pause the video and try to find Mikhail Tal's next moves. Ready? Well, as you can see right now, the rook on d1 is hanging, but here Tal played knight f6, look at these guys. But the rook on d1 is untouchable because of this queen h4 move. Now if h5 then queen g5 is coming, the threat is queen h6 check and then rook h7 checkmate if rook b7 queen g6 is winning. Or after queen h4 if h6 then white can go for this dazzling queen sacrifice after which can announce a checkmate. That's why in our game after knight f6 we have g takes f6, black accepted the knight sacrifice and we have queen h4 with a direct mating threat, bishop g7 and bishop h6. And finally after bishop h6 black accepted the rook sacrifice which allows white to mate in 5. But let's take a look at other continuations as well. What if rook g8 then in here white can capture on d6, if rook b7 then rook f6 is very strong and after the exchange of rooks on f7 bishop e6, rook takes g7, rook takes g7 queen f6, yes, again this is going to be winning, white can win the rook on g7 and after queen takes e6, this queen endgame is going to be winning for white. 
White has two extra pawns and also there are too many weaknesses in black's camp. Or after bishop h6, if we move like queen e6, which is actually the best continuation, then bishop takes g7, check is coming, if king g8, then rook takes f6, yes, again this is a total destruction. The best continuation is to give away the queen, but even in this case, Black can hardly save this position. The g pawn is also coming and white has a huge advantage. Although, again, I have to mention that, of course, this could have prolonged Black's resistance, but in our game we have bishop takes d1. Here Tal captured on g7 and after king g8 he made another beautiful move. Can you find that move? Ready? He played bishop h8. Look at this epic move, guys. Yes, Tal needs his bishop on h8 and not on f6. This f6 square is for the queen. Balek accepted the second rook sacrifice as well, after which Tal captured on f6 and after king g8, Tal announced a checkmate. Of course, it can be rarely seen when Tal's opponents are playing up to a checkmate, but I guess Rantanen felt that such a sweet combination deserves to be completed and played up to the checkmate. Thanks for watching, I hope that you enjoyed this magnificent attack, I have already forgot how many sacrifices we saw in this game. For more games consider subscribing to my channel, also press the bell button to get notified about new uploads. I will see you in my next video.